So what equipment do you need for a home lab to get started with a home lab? So what's a home lab? Well, a home lab is a, a computer lab that you're gonna have at home. A place where you can learn, a place where you can build things, destroy things, troubleshoot without having any impact perhaps in a workplace. Because sometimes in a workplace, if you're working as a tech, you're not allowed to do certain things on certain production equipment, networks or servers or things like that, because things could break. But further than that, it's good for your own learning. So we're not focusing this video on software and what software and what servers and all that you should be building as part of your home lab, but more the physical hardware. What is some of the essential must have hardware for you to be able to actually get started or at least get the best out of your home lab? Now, if you're here for the first time, welcome. Really glad that you have come and you've made it and you've checked out my channel, but you're probably not subscribed. So why don't you click on that button on the bell I release videos every week on all things tech. You'll definitely find those helpful. Now, one other thing as well, if you wanna learn a lot more about the home lab, and yes, today we're gonna to give you a snapshot about some hardware. I've got a full length training course on Udemy on the home lab. So in the description notes of this uh, this video, I've got a link directly to that. Really appreciate it because it helps me out, it helps me to continue to make great content for you guys, but I know that it'll help you out and gives you a lot more material about the home lab specifically. So go and check that out. Okay, so the very first thing, the very first thing you need is your network, your network established. Now, what I mean by that is you need to have some sort of a router or a firewall. So if you're building this in a home, then you're probably already gonna have your home router, your router that your service provider, your, your internet service provider has given you. And that may be fine, but something that actually creates your network, something that maybe has a firewall built in, where you can define what is allowed in and what is allowed out of your network. For example, if you are building a home lab and you want it isolated from the rest of your home, maybe your home has got a whole heap of other stuff, you could have a router in place with a firewall, making sure that certain traffic is not allowed between different areas. Very closely related is having some switching. So you're gonna probably have computers. You may have other devices that need some physical cables running into them. Yes, I know you're probably gonna have Wi-Fi and all of that great stuff, and that's good, but some devices are gonna to need to be physically connected. Your router needs to be physically plugged into something. Maybe if you have a little computer or a server, we need to physically plug those into a switch. Now, a switch doesn't have to be a super sophisticated switch. There are two different types of switches. There is dumb switches, unmanaged switches, they're called unmanaged switches, or managed switches. Unmanaged means you just plug it in and it just works. You don't have to configure everything. You don't have to configure anything. You can't really log into that switch. Then you've got a managed switch and you can configure the different settings on those ports. Maybe a port is a specific speed. Maybe a port is on a specific VLAN. You can actually log in to a web interface or to a command line to actually configure. So that's a switch. So you sort of need that, that's essential. Some routers and firewalls have got built-in switches, right? You may actually have a router that has four or five physical ports on the back, but have a dedicated switch would be even better. We've built, we've built your network, you've got your router, your firewall, your switch, but now you physically need something to start learning, to start building, developing, designing your home lab. And they're gonna be generally servers of some sort. You've got a computer. You may have a pool of computers that you're no longer using. Well, you can repurpose those computers, install virtualization software onto them. You can install VMware's ESXi, you can install VMware Workstation, you could install Citrix, Zen Server onto these computers, configure them as a virtualization server, and then you can build multiple VMs, virtual machines directly onto them. And that's sort of foundational because as part of your home lab, if you're wanting to learn a whole bunch of tech, you're gonna to wanna to go and build a whole bunch of different functions, different virtual machines to do different sorts of things. So you don't need physical computers for each individual thing. You don't need one for this thing and one for this thing. You could literally have a small pool of computers, old computers, and then build multiple virtual servers or virtual computers directly onto them. So virtualization and physical servers, physical computers would be the number three thing that you need on your home lab. So where are you gonna store all of this? Well, you need some sort of storage. I recommend getting yourself a NAS. I think it's one of the greatest things that you can do. I love Synology personally. I love Synology NASs. There are other brands out there. There's QNAP, Netgear, buy the NAS. You stick a whole bunch of hard drives in there. You configure them with raids, with storage pools. There's levels of redundancy so that if disks fails, you don't lose data, all of that. And these are network attached storage, which means that it's connected to your network. All the devices on your network in your home lab 
can actually access all of the data that is sitting on your NAS. Well, if you're gonna be building a whole bunch of virtual servers, you need to be sticking those somewhere. They need some physical hard drive space to be able to store their data. So the NAS centrally manages all the data, all of your virtual machine storage in that one single spot. Now, the last thing is a place to store everything. Where are you physically gonna be putting all of this stuff? Now, you could just grab all this equipment, stick it into the side of your room, put it inside of a closet. It's gonna get really hot. It's gonna have cables running everywhere. I recommend getting yourself a little rack. I've got one that did not cost me very much. From a business that was moving, they didn't need it anymore. You just stick all the equipment in there. There's racks, there's rails. You can make it look really, really nice. There's cable management. That way it's all physically stored in one spot. And the great thing is that with a home lab, you're probably gonna wanna grow it as you go through the years. You may want to go and have equipment in your home lab that is as real as possible, mimics a real life production environment, a workplace environment as close as possible. And of course, in a work environment, you're not gonna have a desktop or a laptop necessarily acting as a server. So you may wanna go down the track and buy yourself some physical rack servers or some rack switching. And then you're gonna to wanna to stick that somewhere. So that's why I choose to use a rack. That were my five. If you wanna learn more down below, I've got a link to a Udemy course all on the home lab. So do remember to go check that out. Subscribe, click on the button on the bell so that you don't miss out on anything and stay tuned for the next video where we talk about all things tech. We'll see you next time.